and welcome to another edition of The Backspace. This week's title, Dick Smacking the Pokemon Zeitgeist. I'm Danny J, and this week I'm joined by Brian and Nelson, where we finally resolve the age-old debate, our game's art. We get topical about video game arcades, Brian pines for his long-lost 3DO, Danny talks about how Pokemon warped his sister's childhood, and we bookend the discussion with the review of the weirdest video on the internet ever. Seriously. Now let's join Nelson as he starts off the show with one of his trademark sagely observations. Oh, fuck. There's a big hair in my coffee. What the hell? How does that work? I don't know. Is it yours? Oh, that's not hair. <laughs> what? Fuck. <laughs> ah, that'll add just add flavor. I think we just, keep, wanna... we just got the, the title of his podcast. <laughs> that's not hair? That's not hair. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the uh what's uh what's the top for discussion today what's the poop yeah um because we were gonna go with video games as art but mm-hmm. figured because spencer has such um opinions on it uh mm-hmm. he feels ways about things he does he feels <laughs> what do you well what do you guys think about our game our games art you guys oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right You're trying to trick us all right let's talk about news <laughs> All right. I'm still trying to figure out how to get this part of a rubber waistband out of my coffee. <laughs> Ew! What? So so many questions. Yeah, I'm totally not getting into that. Um, what were some of the other topics you were considering? B or I? Game related media, more more than anything else. Um, hmm. How we're like all famous now, all of us. All of us. The power was good. within us this whole time. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's it's kind of an interesting topic that that crosses genres. It's not just necessarily games. I mean, anybody can put on a any fucking Yahoo could put on a podcast and be famous. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you just need a mic, some speakers, some recording software, yeah. the Skypes, and boom, podcast. Or yeah, boom, absolutely. Twitch stream. No need to spend all that extra money to get, like, proper gear. <laughs> or, like, record from the same room. Yeah. Like, geography. <laughs> because <laughs> internet. Um, I don't know, what are, you, what, are you, what are you thinking? Yeah. I'm thinking that sounds like a good topic. We can just, you know, we can just go into it. I mean, we already kind of are. Oh. Yeah. And Nelson Nelson had one as well. He was he was bouncing around the topic about arcades. Arcades, cool. The life, yeah. the life and death of arcades. The death of arcades? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, doesn't seem too long ago. It seems like it's a um, a retroactivity waiting in the wings to come back. In my opinion. Really? So? Yeah, I do. I really Why? do. <laughs> Um, for the same reason that we sort of, we had that nostalgic bit about, uh, rock band and, you know, playing guitar. It's just one of those things I think that will come back in time. And, um, I don't ask me what will spawn it. I have no idea. <laughs> um, I don't know. Our, I guess cons- home consoles are arcades now. I just, yeah. maybe, maybe it's my hopeful naivety that, uh, someday we'll all you know, meet at the arcade or some, um, you know, hyper arcade in the future <laughs> where we can partake in, you know, strangers putting quarters on, um, you know, con- uh, uh, controllers to, to combat next, the next one. Next game, bro. There's just something about that, that I missed. I got next. Yeah. And, uh, online gaming has never really, uh, never really touched. Never really matched that experience. Has it? No, no, no. I mean, we were, Nelson and I were discussing it today and just kind of the, the differences. And I, I think one of the main things that's really kind of pushed people away from arcades is just the way that video games has changed. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, before the arcade market kind of drove the, ho- the home market, you have, you have games that you'd see on the Nintendo and stuff that were trying to emulate the experience you get in an arcade. Mm-hmm. And I think they've moved away from that now. We've gotten away from the 15 minute, you know, 
length, quarter sucking, you know, games that are designed specifically to, to suck the money out of your wallets to, to more fully formed sort of entertainment experiences. So was this the topic that you were going on? Was like the arcades are coming back or that there's just sort of a retro uh, nostalgia happening right now? Nelson? I think we were just... It was... It was, we were just, it was sorry, go we, ahead. Go ahead, no, no, anyway. I, no, he addressed it to you, so you you take it. Fine. <laughs> um, no, basically, we were thinking of like discussions or, or for the podcast and kind of got into the original topic of... Um, you know, what was some of your memorable video game experiences from your youth and things like that? Then it kind of, like, naturally migrated over into the whole life and death of arcades. Because realistically, I mean, my first experience with uh, quote-unquote gaming um, was in video arcades. So that's mm-hmm. kind of how it all progressed into a little bit more of a discussion about it, you know. I mean, for example, when I was a kid, probably, I don't know, six or seven years old, maybe, um, my folks and I would always go on uh, a lot of trips around North America and stuff like that. And my first experience was at a camping, you know, like those KOA campgrounds and stuff like that, where uh, they have kind of like a, an area where you where people could get together and, and stuff like that. And a lot of those like kind of public use areas also had arcades. Mm-hmm. And I remember as a kid, you know, kind of walking in there, seeing the glow of the screens and it, it seemed really seedy. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think arcades have ever changed, but at the same time it was, it was kind of enticing as well because it's like, wait, what's all that noise? Right. What are these people doing? Yeah. You know, the attract of... modes, the attract modes on the machines that would like basically challenge you. They like kind of taunt, taunt you into playing them and stuff like that. Oh man, I remember this one game. Um, going back to that memory, uh, it's it's kind of attract mode was insert coin. Ha 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 ha. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Gorf. It would Gorf. just do that over and over again. Is that what yeah. it was? Yeah, it was Gorf. The first one ah. that actually had like real, it had like real sort of fully formed voice. Um, like voice technology in it. Yeah, I remember yeah. there was a there was a gorf, gorf machine at one of the uh, arcades that I used to go to when I was a lot younger. And yeah, that stupid thing never shut up. <laughs> uh, Dragon Slayer. That was the one that always oh, yeah. did. Uh, yeah, especially you know when you're you're a little kid. Like I wasn't allowed to go to an arcade. That was ver- verboten for me. So of course, <laughs> naturally, I'm attracted, and I'm a, a six year old kid, and I'm seeing this you know a very buxom. Um, animated cartoon my first daphne. ever daphne um who was actually modeled after uh found out later a playboy um model i don't the name escapes me but yeah totally that surprise me yes <laughs> don bluth is a genius uh the guy the guy who uh, created that whole th- series but yes uh so yeah i i yeah i i, I understand where you sort of that seediness uh, comes from because i was definitely not allowed sorry Sorry, <laughs> it's a it's an ambulance going by. Sorry, I was just out on the deck. Well, I think the other draw as a kid is mm-hmm. the fact that you know you always saw all the older kids playing games, and well, I mean they were tall enough to actually reach the, the goddamn controls and stuff like that. Yeah. And as a kid, you know you're impressionable, and they look like they're having fun, and you're just like, well, I want to do that too. Meanwhile, they're yeah, all dead sure. inside because they just spent their lunch money and the whole week's lunch money. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, the boring kids used to do to get those quarters. Yeah, no doubt. I remember <laughs> for, for me in North Vancouver here, there were a couple of places that we used to go to. One one was like a pool hall. that, And that was a lot of arcades sort of ended up in pool halls or bowling alleys and stuff like that, right? Where there was other sort of gaming activities going on. But this, pool this halls, one was like bowling alleys or pizza joints. Yeah, yeah. Were places where you'd have to wait for a while or you know like laundromats and stuff like that but uh, there was this one in a pool hall and that was yeah that was where i first saw the laser disc games like the the lost you damn all the hell brian we, we lost brian oh shit <laughs> ah shit hey we got you back it is technical sorry. problems today yeah i'm sorry i think i'm gonna have to plug this thing in hang on one sec um but for me are you still there yep. yeah Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry, it just keeps keeps cutting Top out. Quality on here. podcasting brought to you by. Yeah, the Sky Train. Uh, <laughs> take the Sky Train for all your CD shipping needs. Uh, fine. Hang on a sec, Jesus. <laughs> all right. Just 
trying to get a little noise discipline here, but it's no no quieter inside than it is yeah. or outside than it is inside. Uh, okay, hang on, I gotta plug plug this headset in. Okay. Um yeah. <clears throat> Vamp. Vamp. Do do any uh arcades still exist <laughs> in Vancouver? You would think of all places Vancouver would have uh, the, I can't a lockdown. Think of on any. That. Huh. I can't think of any. I mean I I want to say on. yes. Mm-hmm. But Oh no wait. Well when you say Vancouver, do you mean like Vancouver proper or kind of the surrounding ish areas? Yes. Okay. Um there are <laughs> there are kind of pseudo arcades, not fully fully stocked like game gaming bonanzas or anything like that, but you know, there's there's I think a couple or at least one in Richmond. Um, which happens to be the city in which I live, which is attached to Vancouver. But anyway, um, yeah, there, there's there's one or two um, that still are kind of around. But also these kind of quote unquote arcades, they ha- you know have like the old standards, Dance Dance Revolution, uh, Initial D Racing games and stuff like that. But they also have kind of um, ah, what do you call it? You know the the old internet cafes where kids would go to um you know play their online games. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's it's the same thing. Um I should actually google that. There's because... a big arcade in Metrotown right near near the uh theater there. And of course theaters like the Silver Cities all have sort of arcades in them nowadays too. It's all like buck hunting and car racing. The experiences you can't really have at home, right? Like mm-hmm. the big peripheral kind of things. Yeah, there it is. East Bot in Richmond has uh, billiards, of course, internet gaming, arcade. Uh, hey, you can even play Mahjong, but anyway. <laughs> Everything is more like slot machines and uh, uh, video arcades. That uh, video, video, po- poker. video poker. That's, you know, I'm looking at uh, Florida. I just did a search for uh, arcade, and that's all that's coming up. Panama, uh, Panama, Florida Papa, has, has Funland Arcade. Pittsburgh. Fun food prizes and a really disturbing clown. Star Wars <laughs> Arcade in Illinois. Uh, Barcade in Brooklyn, which I have actually been to Barcade. But anyway. Mm-hmm. Would you buy an arcade? You guys? Um, you know, I, I'd always been kind of eyeing a Neo Geo MVS arcade mm-hmm. box system, whatever you want to call it. Um Except for the fact that there's like maybe two games on there I would actually want, <laughs> and I can't really validate the the cost of the actual carts. The carts themselves are like these, you know, they're bigger than most laptops nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, plus the actual arcade unit, um, the CRT, all that stuff. Plus, you would most likely have to refurbish it a little bit to actually get it to not look sticky and gross and missing half mm-hmm. the decals and stuff. Yeah. It, it's, CRTs it's are a, getting hard to find, apparently. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. It, it's a labor of love to, to actually pick up an old arcade system. And, I mean, there's people that do it, lots of people that do it. But, you know, a lot of the time you're stuck with that one game, which is why the Neo Geo is kind of nicer in a way. Because if you get sick of your game, well, you can either get, like, the four-player – or, sorry, the four-game four-slot. So you can use – select four different games um, to play on those – and gives you a little bit more variety, but at the same time, who the fuck has space for those things anymore? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about what about a pinball machine? I, I always yeah. wanted one of those. Um, I grew up uh, having like pretty much all access to my uncle's quote unquote arcade. He had a couple mm-hmm. pinball machines and some some arcade machines, so I got that out of my system. Uh-huh. Uh I actually have a couple friends who own. Uh, pinball machines as well. It's just one of those things. It's they make a lot of noise. They need maintenance. Mm-hmm. Uh, they take up a hell of a lot of space. I mean, I, I'm being realistic. I'm going to be an apartment rat for many, many, many more years before I actually get a uh, proper house. So <laughs> it's it's one of those things. Like, sure, maybe when I'm in my fifties and I want to, you know, be all nostalgic and shit, probably. But for the foreseeable future, nah. Okay. PC Master Race. <laughs> I would get one of those um, arcade coffee tables, like with Pac Man in it. That's totally BA. A cocktail machine? Yeah. Yeah, I actually played one of those. Uh, was it last year? Yeah, I was on a date last year, and uh, I don't know I, I date maybe once a year. Um, and they actually had one of those, the Pac Man, or sorry, it was Ms. Pac Man uh, tabletop mm. cocktail I, thingy arcade. Nice. Those are cool. 
Mm-hmm. 1942. This, that's a that's a game oh, I remember. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 1942 and what, 1943 too. The one where you could do the loop, the loop. Yeah, that's 43, I think. Yeah, those. I mean, you can you can replicate those now though, because mm-hmm. I mean, you just that's get a stable. Raspberry Pi, you get an LCD, you get a um, you just get a few uh, arcade controller parts. Mm-hmm. And uh, some MDF, a little bit of pl- plexiglass, and boom, you've, you've got a low profile, yeah. non coin op. Probably runs a better version of it that you can refresh the games on. I guess but, for uh, the nostalgia factor, it'd be kind of neat, but really, that's, I mean, honestly, who's going to do that except for the diehard arcade, you know, fans? <laughs> or... So you'd go for a proper one, though? I would, yeah. Mm. With the I mean, CRT when you think about and... it, there's there's still lots of companies. I wouldn't say lots, but there's still all still are companies that repair pinball machines, video arcade machines. Mm-hmm. Um, they exist in the states, maybe not so much up here, but it's still a thing. So, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, what else do we want to talk about? <laughs> Wait, we were done on that topic. Yeah, I think we kind of <laughs> nope that one. Really? What? El- <laughs> okay. Well, if you, what else? What else is there? Um, how do you want to wrap that one up? Nelson has mm. more to say. Well, I'm sure you do too, Brian. <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, there's, there's just the kind of, you know, reminiscing about, about you know, old days in the arcade and stuff like that. And, yeah, there was some there was some weirdness that went on in some of the arcades that I went to when I was a kid. And, Such yeah. as? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I've, I've never really been in a fight, but the closest I ever came was always at an arcade, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that's one thing I always noticed about arcades, which I can say legitimately I don't miss arcades in one regard. It's because, you know, you would always run into the douchebag at an mm-hmm. arcade or many douchebags at arcades who need to assert their alpha maleness to everyone. And, yeah, I, I'm pretty much with you on that one. It's like, fuck you, man. I just want to come here and play some games. <laughs> That's yeah, where exactly. we became men at the arcade. <laughs> uh, well, it's yeah. where we cut our teeth, at least. Um, yeah. Did you guys ever go to an arcade that had like the original Street Fighter yep. with like no. the velocity, the velocity sensitive big pads? Like it didn't have three buttons for the punches and kicks. It just had this big kind of big kind of rubber thing that you had to hit, and depending on how hard you hit it, that's how hard an attack it an attack you did. No, I didn't hear about that one. Those fucking yeah. sucked. <laughs> yeah, those were awful. And those machines were, were more, more more often than not, those machines were broken. Yeah, yeah. Because there was always some guy who had to drop kick the, the, the stupid thing, and, well, <laughs> it can yeah. only take so much abuse. It's just, yeah, it's like I mean, those uh, golf games, you know, with the, like the um, spinny trackball thing. Nine times oh, out of ten, God. those fuckers were always broken because some asshole. Remember, mm-hmm. Yeah, some asshole would just spin it until it flies out of the machine practically. Yes. There was another machine like that. There was. Um, Track and field. You remember that track and field machine? Oh wow! Is that where you move the stick back and forth really fast? No, it was a, it was a trackball. But you had to you had oh. to like spin the trackball as fast as you could to run as fast as you could, and, and it was it was nuts. That that game was like as much of a workout as actually doing the events sometimes. Huh? You ever yeah. played that one? No. <sighs> or Karate Champ with the with the two oh. sticks. Fuck yeah, Karate Champ. That game was great. <laughs> karate Champ. <laughs> Block high, roundhouse kick. That was my killer combo every time. Nice. No, nice. my only my only experience with the rollerball was for Qbert. I did play Qbert a lot. Qbert. Uh, not Qbert. Oh, uh, sorry, not the one with the bear that's trying to get the honey, the jars Crystal of honey. Crystal Castles. That's it. Wow. Or Mar- Marble Madness. Uh, Marble Madness was good too, yeah. Oh, man. That, that was my game. I played that a lot for the NES, too. Yeah, I, when that first came out on the NES, I was so, like, I knew what I was getting into. And I'm like, Mom, I want that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think uh, it, it sucks because I found my old NES carts not that long ago, and Marble Madness was one that I owned. Can't find it. Oh. Uh, but whatever, mm-hmm. I can just get an emulator. <laughs> yeah, that's yep. true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, uh, I can find other legitimate and legal ways to acquire video games. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I think when you yeah, when you're talking about how the arcades have kind of dwindled in the last little while, that's that's one of the reasons why. It's the same reason why movie theaters are not seeing as many people going to them these days. It's because you can replicate that at home for mm-hmm. you know, for less money and, and 
you know. And at home, pop. there's no dick bag kicking the back of your seat every fucking time. You can time. text and not get shot. Yeah, that too. <laughs> not all the time, but <laughs> quite often down here. <laughs> wow, America. Uh huh. So, uh, who's guilty of ever trying uh, Dance Dance Revolution? No. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. no. I, I know my limitations. I'm yeah. I I have a lot of no. I jiggled way too much for that. <laughs> um, although I you see some videos of kids with no shame whatsoever. Oh, dude. Yeah. That, that are yeah. just giving her. Um, kind of makes put Star Wars kid to shame. Yep. Mm. You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got you guys know that on on the Wayback Machine, like the uh, Internet Archive, they've done a pretty good job of uh, archiving these old these old software. Arcade software as well. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, take a look on that uh, archive.org. And uh, they just received a huge donation, anonymous donation, to uh, to store just tons of software. I bet it was Bill Gates. It probably was. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so they got things for, well, this is consoles, mind you. Coleco, Atari. Um, but they also have uh, consoles. Uh, what else do here? Yeah, check that out. I mean, if you want to go take a trip down Retro Lane, they even have a built-in software emulator in the website. You can just you can check that out. Is it Mame? No, it's uh, it's a just a built-in. Um, uh, I don't know what it is. Probably uh, probably uh, Java. <laughs> Most likely. Probably. See, this this is one of those times where if Spencer was in the conversation, he would have a lot more to add to that. But mm-hmm. yeah, well, I think we talked about it before on the podcast. It just um, it's come up before and. Uh, yeah, it's. I think it's a pretty cool, worthy endeavor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Absolutely, because there really hasn't been a lot of. Um, I mean, when you're in the, the the moment, you don't you don't consider it uh, worthy to to you know you store this information, and it just becomes lost. So, you know, uh, yeah. So yeah, check that out for sure. I was actually thinking about that a little bit lately, not necessarily with video games, but uh, even like TV shows and shit like that. Like Twenty One Jump Street, for example, that was that was kind of a, a TV show that was you know sort of Vancouver popular. Um, hmm. But it's it's like where would you find that nowadays aside from the internet? <laughs> yeah, or any BBC. Can, can you get the DVD box set or the Blu-ray special edition? Probably not. Well, actually, maybe you could, but uh, hmm. Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you you remember like how they they found a bunch of BBC recordings of uh uh Doctor Who because uh well, what they used to do is because there was a shortage of tape uh, they would just re-record they, over it. Exactly. So they found a in a dumpster in Australia somewhere they found a whole bunch of uh, a dumpster in Australia. Uh-huh. Mhm. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, I'm sure we'll probably find we'll f- eventually f- dig up that fabled the treasure trove of ET cards. Of ET, man, you guys know where I'm going. <laughs> yes, if such a thing exists, yes. Leaping to your segways. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um, that game was just terrible. Yeah, it was really yeah. hard. It's well, really it's because most people. I mean, it didn't really have any instruction to speak of, and no one knew how to play it, except yeah. for the people who developed the game, and even then, half of them probably had no idea. Uh, I was so. rushed out to. It was rushed out to capitalize on the movie. The the whole story of that is pretty well documented at this point. It was. Uh, mm-hmm. it was How do you play a, it? I don't know. Ship it. <laughs> a bad cash in, yeah. Terrible, and huh. pretty much single handedly caused the crash of the uh, uh, the whole video Doomed game. Atari. Yeah. And that's actually the year I bought the Atari. My mom bought me the Atari that year. <laughs> For hey, these games were probably cheap, right? Man, I can't. At the time, it was seven hundred dollars. If you put that into uh, holy shit, yeah, seven hundred dollars adjusted for inflation. Isn't that yeah. insane? Seven hundred dollars yeah. for a console, dude. Yeah. You can get like two P- two PS fours for that. I paid six hundred something for my three uh, DO at the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, you had a three DO, huh? I had a three DO. Yeah, we Come never over. bugged Brian about that at all. We, you can bug me all you want. I got to play Return Fire and Star Control too. That's true. We we I don't care. The, one of the things that kind of keeps me from retro gaming is, is that when I go back and and play some of this stuff, I'm like, yeah, that's the games have really come a long way since this. <laughs> 
So yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I enjoy I enjoy older games, but uh, some of that stuff was was pretty pretty out there. I mean, Star Control too. I, I still replay it every now and again with the uh, Urquan Masters remake of it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I, I think I probably would actually. I'd probably hook it up every now and again and just have a boot through it for old time's sake. Huh. One of the great things about the 3DO that not many people know about is because it was open concept, uh, people were free to make whatever kind of games they wanted on it, and there were a bunch of porn games. <laughs> ah. and did you own any of those? <laughs> I rented a couple of them. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> What's it like? But I mean, <sighs> uh, pretty bad. Were they good? <laughs> they, were, they were terrible, weren't they? <laughs> they were pretty bad, yeah. Yeah, oh, they were. Wow. Yeah. Actually, but I remember had, seeing. They had naked a, ladies in them. Yeah, I remember seeing a video about one Very of the very grainy um, ladies. Yep. One of the 3DO porno games. Yeah. One of them was called no. Neuro Dancer. I remember that one distinctly. Oh. It, had, it had like this really bad kind of. Um, it was like a maze game where you were pretend like you were supposed to be a hacker who was sending like some remote through like sewer tunnels to hack into businesses to buy enough to get enough money. To pay for your favorite, like, to fa- pay for your favorite dancer. <laughs> like, you'd, you'd go and you'd hack these things, and there's like this really rudimentary, stupid hacking game, and then, and then you take the money, you take the money from your remote, you pile your remote back home, and then you call up this girl. Uh-huh. There was like, I think there was like three or four different girl dancers in the games, and you call her up, and depending on how much money you got from your hacking activities, that's how how much how much how many clothes she would take how, off. How the quality of the girl? Or oh, okay, okay. Nah, no, no, um, man, they were all they were all pretty dodgy. Yeah, I so. I'm looking at pictures from from Neural Dancer. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, nice. I gotta see this. Then. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. But those are giant computer monitors, though. I, Let me see. Gigantic. Images for NeuroDancer. <laughs> you know, you can actually almost give oh, yeah. Payday, yeah. Payday Two some purpose. You're doing all those heists to pay for your porn addiction. Hmm. Yeah, that's 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 the kind of backstory that this game had. But yeah, yeah, that's definitely oh, cover. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you'd come home and there'd be like this little holographic tank thing in the middle of your desk and, and mm-hmm. the little the little horrible pixelated thing of the woman would dance there. Wow. Well You seem to know an awful lot about this game. How much time how many times did you rent it? Uh only a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple hmm. hundred. <clears throat> nah, you no, stole I, the cart, didn't you? I, no, I saw it was a it was a disc, and yeah. uh, I saw pretty much everything it had to offer. Um, yeah, in the first, in the first or second rental of the game that I got. Yeah, huh. <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to ask any more questions about it. I already knew. Yeah, that I, I think I think the whole I think the whole novelty of like. I mean, didn't they even say like, "Oh, porn will drive the video game industry for consoles"? Like, yeah, for a long, long time. And yeah, how'd that come along? Yeah, well, they control the sandbox. I'm sure that if they didn't, if they let it open, like, okay, let's talk about uh, maybe the Steam box. If they let that architecture open, and it is, uh-huh. um, you could start seeing uh, porno games for it. But yeah, I don't know that stuff now. If you know where to look at it, look yeah, for but- it on dirtier corners of the internet. Would you actually want to play a porn game nowadays, though? Not really. For like five minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> yep. Really. Ambidextrous controls required. You, you just feel bad after. Well, I mean, oh yeah, that's like, right. They had this. They had this thing in Neurodancer. I'm just looking at. The, I'm still looking at these images. They had this thing called the TFUI interface, the Touch Feel User Interface. The ultimate cybersex simulator that enables the user to touch and interact with virtual girls from the first person point of view. Wow. <laughs> patent pending. I wonder if they ever got that patent. I, they must have sold millions. <laughs> well, they oh couldn't because not, met, not that many people own 3DOs. No. Well, they they well. should have sold millions. <laughs> that um, should have been like, uh, should have been a throw in with the system. Yeah. Like the uh, light gun? Now includes your deepest, darkest desires. <laughs> they probably would have. They probably would have made a lot of money. Um, okay, let's. Uh, okay, what else do, you, uh, do you want to move on to? A new topic? Sure, we can do that. Um, we can talk about news because there are some. There is some news out there. There is. Uh huh. 
the the well, uh, you guys probably all heard about Nintendo's announcement that they uh, are have completely shit the bed and may no longer make the year. <laughs> well, yeah, but they're sitting on fourteen billion dollars in cash, so they're yeah. probably going to be okay. Nintendo's not going anywhere. Uh, they, Sorry, fourteen billion. That's with the B. With the B. Okay. Yeah. So they're going to ride this storm of one year. Okay, so now I don't have a Wii U, but I still think I'm going to get one. It For me, that magic number is 250 bucks for the deluxe uh, edition yeah. with the two games. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have been calling for them to not you release the, the, you know, the how they have the PDA built into the the, the, the controller. Yep. And saying, get rid of that. But if you haven't used it, um, that is actually a core part of the of the product is is being able to play, uh, bring bring the game up to your face and, and so, play it. It sounds like the Connect. <laughs> well, you can you can play it without without a TV, basically. With yeah, some yeah. Games you need it to initial like set up, but after that, yeah, you can push it right to the, which is uh, which is cool. I mean, a lot of people like uh, I know some dads who use it. They call it the dad button. <laughs> because they can play video games and then their you know their kids can watch um, Scooby Doo. Is that what the kids watching these days? Dora the Explorer. Yeah. God, you guys. Rewrite. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> anyway, um, Scooby Doo. <laughs> I, I, I assume. Uh, all right. So the Wii U is not going anywhere. It's only a year and a bit into its sales. That's the same thing with the 3DS. Um, this is actually good news because it'll be a, a price drop. I'm going to get it as soon as it gets down to 250 bucks. A lot of people will too. They got tons of games coming out this year. I don't need to say anything more about it. It's still – it's not out of the – it's not – don't discount it yet is all I'm saying. Well, Nintendo has always been good at, at dealing with it. Yeah. And – Sure, they've they've been experiencing further shitty sales over the last like what five years, six years, maybe a little bit more. Eh. Mm-hmm. They're they're gonna be a company that's always gonna be around because when the whole video game thing really took off, Super Mario Man, mm-hmm. Mario, yeah, <laughs> first part first party sales have been the driving yeah. factor in in the Wii. Um, the DS, I mean, the 3DS. I don't know. I, I probably would get a Wii U if I was a little bit more social and if you didn't have was, to call it a Wii U. Yeah, <laughs> and was and was willing to have people over a little bit more often. And at the same time, their game library has to be more interesting to me, particularly. Yeah. Right. Because I, I can only play so many Mario game side scroller games before you just get sick of it. I know that's blasphemy mm-hmm. to some people, but... Well, they've actually swamped the market with Mario. There's been Luigi last year, two Luigi games, uh, two Mario 2013 games. 2013 was the year of Luigi, man. Yeah, and that's just... <laughs> it tanked them. Poor Luigi. Luigi fucked them over. That's, that's what it was. He finally gets the limelight, and look what happens. Fucking chains. <laughs> Fucking chains. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, Brian. Brian. Oh, you know, mm-hmm. he he. You don't really. You don't play Nintendo. You were never into the Nintendo uh, yeah. lifestyle. N- Nintendo has always been a. I, I've said this before on the podcast, but yeah. Nintendo has always been a blind spot in my uh, in sort of my my gaming spectrum. So, is there a console? I, Sorry, didn't mean to jump on your. No, no, that's fine. Um, is there a console you're eyeballing right now, at all? Not really. No. No. Honestly, I'm. Um, I've still got my PS3 and my Xbox 360. Uh, I, you know, still occasionally pull out some old games for those ones, but uh, mm-hmm. there's nothing out there right now that really makes me feel like I need, um, an, you know, a current generation console. Yeah. I yeah. almost jumped on a PS3 because of The Last of Us. Yeah. yeah. Me too. I, it was very, very compelling. And to be honest, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> That's the only game I really want for the PS3. Yep. Uh, yeah, that I want to would get a PS3 for. Um, I actually well, probably would get a PS4 <laughs> if they had uh, Last of Us like a, a DLC for it. I uh, I bought my P 
PS3 to play Dark Souls hmm. because that was a console exclusive at the time. Uh, I think it actually still is. You can you can get Demon Souls or no, it's Demon Souls. Sorry, I yeah. bought it to play Demon Souls. Uh, Dark Souls you can play on everything, but um, but yeah, that was that was kind of the reason why I bought mine. Plus, I didn't have a Blu-ray player. Yeah, uh, and at the time it was like you know I could go out and buy a Blu-ray player or I could just get you know a PS3, and I decided to go with the PS3. Right. Yep. Good call. I don't have a blue player, but I, uh, a Blu-ray player, but I have tons of Blu-ray discs. <laughs> That's just, I don't know why. You should stop buying those, Dan. You don't have anything to play them on. I know. <laughs> I, if, if only I could just hack them and put them on my hard drive, but that would be illegal. But, you know. Mm. See, that's the thing. Like, I, I don't own a TV anymore. My my computer is my TV because I've got a pretty decently sized monitor. Mm-hmm. Um, so consoles in general, not really my shtick because, mm-hmm. eh. The other thing is like going going back to the collecting the DVDs is in the Blu-rays is, um, or having a console to play them in in the same token. I mean, do people still? Well, I guess obviously they do because they keep releasing Blu-rays and DVDs. But do you guys see that as something that's going to eventually taper off and die, kind of like VHS or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. CDs, arcades. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, hell, when was the last time you went out and bought a CD? <laughs> Never CD. I've, not this. Not this uh, millennium. Christmas nope. before last, I got a copy of the new Soundgarden album on CD, but I think that's the last oh. one I've gotten. I mean, I, I buy stuff on vinyl, which mm-hmm. comes with a little slip to download the music digitally too, which is yeah. kind of nice. But yeah, I don't know. Hmm. I mean, yeah. there's 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 a lot of reasons why. Why consoles may not be doing so well anymore? Well, fuck it. Xbox One and PS4 are still kicking ass. So, mm-hmm. yeah, there's always going to be a, a market for that. People who just want to plug something into their TV and sit down and play. You know, the the low barrier to entry gaming. That's there's always going to be people who want that. Exactly. Um, this is a, another segue into the next bit of news about the. Uh, uh, Alienware saying that they're going to launch a new Steam machine every year. Huh. Uh, so because upgrades. Yeah. So they're saying it's going to be same price as a Xbox One, so around seven hundred bucks. Jesus. Yeah. Every year. Uh, t- interesting news. I guess treating it like disposable at a premium price. That's a little odd. But then you know you're getting. You're getting a new console every year that's tied to your PC uh, gaming mm. library. And do you just swap the hard drives? They didn't say. <laughs> they just said they're going to Because that's a lot of drive. shit to have to re-download. Yeah. I mean, I'd seen one Steam box that uh, acted kind of like a Visa mount for your TV. Hmm. You know, it was basically like this slimline PC case, like almost like a Blade server that basically mounts behind your... your um, your TV, like your LCD TV, mm-hmm. and it's a fully fledged Steam box with uh, upgradeability limited upgradeability. Like you can throw in your favorite video card, um, you can toss in more RAM if you want different hard drives. That's about it. You can't really up- upgrade the core of the system. But mm-hmm. you know, for me, if Steam OS and all that goes really well, or I end up in an environment where I would probably use my TV more. Mm, yeah, that it, I can probably see myself maybe getting a Steam box. The other thing is it has to support certain things like streaming of video or music files off of my main PC. Right. If well, it doesn't support it. I mean, that, fuck it. Yeah, that's that's where I come down on this stuff. I mean, if if it, uh, I don't think a Steam box in a in a kind of controlled environment is going to match what you can do for a similar amount of money with an HTPC. I mean, you could build an HTPC with whatever, you know, whatever specifications you want and still be able to, you know, install Windows on it and and have Steam running on, on you know, on your TV, but still use it as a, as a media streaming device. If, if the Steam boxes are, are going to lock those kinds, of, those kinds of features down, then I don't really see the appeal. Yeah. Well, do Steam boxes also need keyboard and mouse? No, they have a controller. Yeah, it's a it's a it's it's proprietary to them. 
Oh, right, because they have that funky controller now. Yeah. 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 Hmm. They just said they ditched the touchscreen, though, and they're going to adjust placements so it's going to be similar to the Xbox controller. Yeah. Yeah. Xbox controller, golden standard. Mm-hmm. I still haven't got one of those. Like a, one from oh, PC. man. Yeah. Best, best purchase I ever made, except for the, that fucking D-pad. <laughs> Well, Although the Xbox One controller, apparently the D-pad is way, way, way better. But oh, that's what I've heard too. Do you have the the old, old one, Brian? Because I heard Which? you can life hack that one, or not life hack, but just hack it. So that <laughs> you can... What you mean the old Xbox One brick controllers? Yeah, the big fat ones. No, I don't. I don't have any of those anymore. Um, I was the only person I know who even liked those controllers. I liked them. <laughs> They're great. They're nice you, and grippy. Do you both have monster hands or something? Oh, I do. But... I got long thumbs, man. They're freakishly huh. long, so yeah, I liked it. <laughs> Things um, we learn about Dan in this podcast. <laughs> yeah, the first time I put my hands on one of the original Xbox controllers, I was like, "Finally, <laughs> <laughs> somebody gets me." <laughs> but then, yeah, everybody started bitching about, "Oh, too big, too heavy," blah, blah, blah. and I was like, "No, this is perfect." Mm-hmm. I don't really have but, an issue with them. I mean, I've, I've played with that controller and it's not terrible yeah i don't know there seems to be a lot of nerd rage about those about those particular controllers so yeah nerds speaking yeah. of nerd rage uh-oh um no. there's still tons of bitching going on <laughs> on reddit about next generation consoles still using 30 frames per second as if it's an issue um, and, and and 720p as the uh, definitive edition. Well, they're using Tomb Raider as an example. So these are next-gen consoles, the ones that everybody's spending $700 plus on. And they're still putting out really kind of, you know, mediocre resolution. Now, mind you, this is just resolution and frames per second. This isn't actual, like, polygons or, or texture mapping or any of that stuff. It's, but they're getting off, like, into the read about... The resolution and, and, and frames per second. Do you think that matters? What do you guys think about that? Do you think okay. it, frame it rate? <laughs> I really don't Sorry. notice yeah. frame rate. No. I mean, to the quote unquote hardcore FPS gamer, they might notice frame rate. As long as it doesn't drop below 30, you're not going to notice. Because, I mean, for example, the human eye can only register, I think it's 26 or 28, maybe at the most 30 frames per second anyway. Anything above that, your your eyes don't see it. So maybe I'm, I'm misunder- misinterpreting how frame rate works for computer games or console games well, in general. It does, it does factor into stuff like screen tearing and motion blur and stuff like that. You know, there's... To a degree, know. yeah. Yeah, I mean... Vast majority of PC monitors these days seem to do what, like 60 hertz or 120 hertz? 100, I think they're 120. 120, for and you can do a 3D. Yeah, you can do 3D. Right. right. No, 120 hertz is for like the the high end gaming monitors. That's what I got. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. But, but yeah. Um, but I think the vast majority of them are 60 hertz, whereas TVs have already always operated on kind of a lower a lower frame rate. So, I think. You know, when when they're saying that they're they're using these kinds of these kinds of standards like 720p, 30 frames per second, I think there's a, probably a fair amount of market research that goes into stuff like that. That's uh, you know that determines what kind of capabilities people's TVs have, and that determines how much they're going to spend on on the architecture for these things, right? Yeah, you know, it the, is true because hardcore... by and large, a lot of the 1080p TVs very affordable. Yep. Or sorry, a 720p. Um, yep. The 1080s, those are getting into the higher price range. The 4K or whatever, how many people do you know have one of those? Nobody. But, mm. you know, I, my TV is, uh, the TV I have now, it's probably about four or five years old, and it, it's 1080i. It's not 1080p. So, you know, the 720 thing doesn't really bother me. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, nerd rage, who gives a shit? Um, yeah. Honestly, never, though, I yeah, mean, I've... as long as the graphics look good, fuck it. Who mm-hmm. cares? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Style goes a lot further for me, like the actual artistic side of it in terms of graphics um, than, you know, counting pixels or, or, you know, worrying about frame rates and stuff like that. So, I mean, I guess as TVs get bigger, I mean, 55 seems to be almost the standard now. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I can kind of see resolution being an issue. But yeah. again, you know, do you really need a TV that big? Nah. 
All right, let's talk about um, really quickly with the games we played. Did we play any? You guys play any games this week? Mm, let me have a look here. Games? Mm-hmm. Library. I've right. been uh, I've been marathoning a, a Netflix um, marath- marathoning the Netflix lately. What have you been watching? <laughs> you promise not to laugh? No. Oh, okay, Supernatural. <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. I wouldn't laugh about that. I've been going to fucking town on that show, I've been man. hearing good I've, things. I'm on season eight, and I started this like two weeks ago. <laughs> nice. Well, let me see. What have I played in the last week or so? According to my Steam list, I've played Batman Arkham Origins. I finished that. Yeah. What would you think? Um, it's a testament to the, the strength of the formula that that game is even playable. <laughs> um Wow, Batman. That's that's a, that's no, a scathing that, review from Brian. I don't I don't think that's really scathing. I, it, it's it's a competent game. Okay. Um, it's not it's not as good as either of the two games that came before it, but I still played it all the way through at the end, and I don't say that about many games. Very so. cool. Yeah. Um, no, it's 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 good. I mean, it's Batman, right? You know what you're getting yeah. into when you when you fire it up. So, that rock steady Batman formula is is great. It's you know it's it's got a lot of life in it, and and I enjoyed the game. I had fun with it. Um, honestly, the game that they were selling me, I think, was more intriguing than what I what I actually ended up with. You know, I don't know how spoilery spoilery we want to get here, but the 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 marketing material made me think that I was in for a different experience than I actually ended up with with that game. A lot of the videos I've seen of that game, and I haven't, to be honest, I haven't watched much, <laughs> mm-hmm. but some of the cutscenes look fucking brilliant. Like movie, mm-hmm. qu- movie, real life movie, movie quality. Yeah. Some of them were really good. And, you know, there were, there were aspects of it that were, that were ripped off wholesale from Arkham City. Like some of the map is, is basically recycled, reskinned. Um, you know, you're saying the, the boss fights too, right? Yeah, some of the boss fights were were note for note identical. Like there's there's one the one of the boss fights where you fight Deathstroke. It's it's they recycle elements from the Ra's al Ghul boss fight in in Arkham City. Oh yeah, yeah. So spoilers. It, yeah, not really. <laughs> not really. But no. yeah, I don't know. I found uh, there was something still very compelling about it, and it was interesting to kind of see a different take on Batman. The 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 change in the voice actors didn't bug me as much as I thought I would as I thought it would. And the guy who played um, the guy who did the Joker, uh, Troy Baker, he's mm-hmm. basically the guy you call when you can't get Nolan North, pretty much in mm-hmm. video games. Yeah. He's in everything. If you look at his IMDb page, he's he's in every goddamn game ever made. Oh yeah. But um, he actually did a really <clears throat> really good job for not you know for not being Mark Hamill. So. But uh, yeah, I finished that one. Um, I've been playing Spelunky lately too. Mm, that game's fun. That game hates me and wants me to be unhappy. <laughs> oh no! Every really? time I every time I play it, it's just like, yeah. See how bad you are. See, see, see how bad you are. Look at how bad you are. You didn't even. Make I was it surprised at how in depth Spelunky really is. Because yeah. at first There's I thought, you know, just just dungeon creeper game. No, fuck no. After what you explained to me, that game is deep <laughs> as shit. Yeah. Yeah. I started playing it because I started I, there's a guy I follow on YouTube his name's Northern Lion he was he was sort of the genesis of my binding of Isaac obsession and he's kind of moved on to uh to Spelunky now but yeah the, the you start playing that game you have no idea what kind of what kind of craziness you're in for because there's there's a bunch of different things that you can you can kind of you can really go down the rabbit hole with that game it's it's pretty crazy So I finished um, Brothers Oh nice cool I haven't finished yeah. that one yet. Yeah, I haven't started that one. Um, I, I want to. I, I kind of spoiled a little bit of it for Brian. Sorry, Brian. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a key don't, don't thing. Don't compound your folly. Don't and compound I, your folly by spoiling it again for, for yes, everybody listening. I want to really, I really want to play that, and I don't want to be spoils to the. So, yeah. yeah it's honestly, it wasn't a surprising spoiler. Like it was kind of like no. if I sat down and thought about the story, I'd be like, "Yeah, that makes sense," but I I didn't want to hear it anyways. So. <laughs> yeah, well, too late. But I, I mean, Aww. that game was what two, a little over two hours for me, and and I finished it. Right. What have I got? Um, Cancel. Apparently, it was supposed to be Fields the game, but I must have a cold, dead heart because I mean, you know, I could see certain parts of it would probably be a little bit more feelerific, but. Uh, mm-hmm. 
I, I don't want to. I don't want to criticize, you know, your play style or anything like that. But I think maybe if you had taken a little more time and stopped to smell the roses a little bit in that game, because there's ample opportunity to kind of just goof around. Yeah, there's benches. Yeah, yeah there's. Benches. Those benches were cool because it, it gave you like uh, almost a not a panorama, but sort of like just lets you sit, think, absorb, and view the scenery. Um, I, I, I speed speed ran that game, so yeah. 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 I mean, I uh, yeah. I felt stuff when I was playing it, but I mean, I wasn't like by the end of it, a, a heaping sobbing mess, but, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. well, we can talk more about that in our games as art discussion whenever we choose to have that. This is true. Um, yes, they are. And moving fun game, along, though. fun game. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, it is, it is a fun game. Um, I'd like to play it. Uh, just it. seeing, I'm just seeing videos of it. I just, yeah, looks, looks really cool. Uh, I've been playing Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon Y. Sorry, I always have to laugh when someone says Pokemon. When a grown, grown I'm, ass man I'm a says, grown ass I've been man. playing the Pokemons. I'm playing Pokemon. <laughs> I have not collected them all. In fact, what? I'm only up to the second uh, uh, gym. Yeah, but Dan, I don't know if you've heard. Mm-hmm. You've got to catch them all. I heard that, and I'm not. No, fuck that. <laughs> you got to, though. You gotta catch them all. Why should I get a Caterpie? Like, or a, <laughs> a what? Because you gotta catch them all. No, I don't buy. I don't. I don't buy into that whole uh, zeitgeist of the Pokemon. I have. <laughs> I have four key Pokemon. One of them, of course, is Pikachu, the male version with the spiky okay. tail. Um, there's a female. Yep, this this female version has a curly tail. You didn't know that. No. Clearly, no, I did not. clearly, you're not a Pokemon master. Clearly not. Wait. The tail is supposed to look like a lightning bolt, though. How do you curlify that? It's curled. It's like curled. It's like angled. It's because she uses a curling iron because she's concerned about her appearance. <laughs> she's a girl. Do you not understand what they have to do for us? <laughs> I mean, you know, to be honest, I, I wouldn't mind trying Pokemon just to figure out what all the fucking hype is about. Yes. <laughs> we have kind of a funny story about Pokemon. And the trying thereof. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is that um, how Dan you want to tell it? Or uh, down the deep dark rabbit hole and has no. That's how my sister was introduced to Pokemon. But yeah, maybe maybe Brian, you should just okay. Get his ball. Well, yeah, Dan and I were roommates way back in in the long long ago, mm-hmm. and um, in the before times. Brings, yeah, he brings home this this uh, original. It was an uh, original Game Boy. It wasn't even a Game Boy Color, right? Yeah, yeah. It was like the first first edition Game Boy. And he's got this Pokemon cartridge in it. And I'm like, I've heard of that. Oh, I wonder if I should try this thing. So I, I start playing playing a little bit of Pokemon. And eventually I was like, yeah, yeah that's, it seems cute. And I played it. I didn't play it for that long. I only played it for, I don't know, a couple hours or something like that. But um, he takes his Pokemon and his, his Game Boy and gives it back to his sister. And then a couple days later, he comes up to me. He's like, uh, Brian, what did you name your Pokemon when you first uh, first started playing the Pokemon game on my sister's Game Boy. So oh, like, no. Oh, right. I, I called him Dick Smack. Yep. <laughs> and yeah. so Dan got to feel the question from his then. How old was she? Like mm, About six. Six-year-old sister. What is Dick, Dick Smack? Smack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it was a scarring oh experience for it, her. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, I, one I of many. A, I felt kind of bad about it. Did you, though? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm never. Not yeah. Never really looked at my <laughs> sister in the face, like straight in the eyes, ever again. Uh, and she doesn't really. She doesn't remember that at all. No. No. Oh. I'll have to that's remind her after this. Yeah, clearly. Or she'll listen, and uh, yeah. But yeah, that's that's her introduction to Dick Smack. <laughs> you mean Pokemon? And Pokemon. <laughs> Forever Dick Smack and Pokemons. <laughs> Uh, that, yeah, that wraps up my Pokemon and gaming um, mm-hmm. uh, this week. Wow, so, not, That's, a, uh, not a whole lot. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Well, life's, it's, the shit's been getting pretty busy for you, right? So yeah, uh, deep in the bowels of uh, uh, America, America, America. It's, it's the dick and balls state, as we call it down in Florida. <laughs> ooh, America's playing. America's um, the Wolf Among Us. The uh, Chapter two or whatever uh, should be dropping soon, very soon. Yeah, I'll like believe it. First when week I see of it. 
lies to be telling us yeah, all Yeah, I know. Lies. It's telltale. You know, it's like, oh, this is when we're going to release it six months later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, they said they'd have it out by uh, Christmas, so fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> Fuckers. Yeah. I really – I'm invested in that game. I want to know. And there's th- yeah. three three more chapters after that, so yay. Yep. Total of five. Um, Formulaic. Okay, have you tried the uh, the zombie one? Wait, my brain is not functioning. Walking that Dead? Free to, free to play zombie one? No, one The Walking Brian? Dead Part 2. Oh. Uh, With Clementine. I um didn't end up picking it up because I was hoping for it to go on a deeper discount, and it never did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, spring sale. Yep. <laughs> Spring sale. That's when I'll be playing playing that one too. Yeah, I ended up l- somehow losing my uh, save from the original Walking Dead um, in a lovely hard drive crash. So I get to replay the first one again, and then mm. let that shape my decisions for the second. Right. Plus, I'm probably going to end up picking up the uh, that five dollar in between game for those. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about the Borderlands uh, release for that? You gonna, you gonna any interest in that one from Telltale? Hmm. I'd have to know a little bit more about it. Yeah. But uh, you know, I like the Borderlandses, so it's it's on my radar. That's for sure. But mm-hmm. whether or not I'll actually pick it up, eh? I'm really curious what they're going to do with it, though. Me too. I, I'm sure there'll be a few surprises. <laughs> uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, if they stick to the uh, same old mechanic of, uh, you know, sort of quick time events, I, oh, might, yeah. I might take a big fat pass on that one. <laughs> uh, we'll they, no, they probably will. That's, that's their yeah. shtick for, for the things. As long as, you know what, as long as there's no Tiny Tina. You didn't like Tiny Ugh. Tina? Dude. <laughs> no. I, no. I don't even think Tiny Tina likes Tiny Tina. I don't know. Thanks for the paycheck. Go home and I cut. found out that Ashley Birch was a DLC character in Saints Row 4, too. Hmm. Really? Yeah. As Tiny Tina? No, as, as Ashley Birch. Oh. There's wow. the, uh, hey, Ash, what you playing pack for Saints Row 4. Jesus. I was like, Ugh. Did you end up playing that uh, over the past weekend when it was free to play? No, I did not. <laughs> Me neither. I did not. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I played a lot of Saints Row 3, but yeah, I don't know. Something something about Saints Row 4, and I just never really felt any, any desire to buy that one. It makes me wonder, though, because they did that free-to-play weekend. Um, are there sales shitting the bed or something that they had to well, try that, or...? I don't know. I mean, it's all, it's gotta be all cake at this point, right? Like it's, it's just, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they made their money back on, on development, but I mean, that one, that one was kind of weird because it kind of, the publisher was different for three and four, wasn't it? And it was like, um, uh, deep silver, deep silver bought, bought out the THQ stuff. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's a different publisher than, uh, but it's still volition, volition de- developing it and stuff. But the same yeah. bunch of goofy crap. Yeah, yeah. Dubstep gun. I'll probably pick it up when it gets below ten bucks on a sale sometime. If they know. if they put it on for a fiver, sure. Yeah. That's how yeah. much I got uh what is it, Saints Row Three, Four, so All right. Anything else you guys wanna talk about before we uh nope. call it? Mm-hmm. No, I think that pretty much does it for me. Well there's so much to talk about, but yeah, no, we'll just probably have to save it for later or something. Get something right. in the can so that we can yeah, so, so that we can have something to feed our ravenous, hungry fan base. Um, yeah, that's the problem. All is... four of them. <laughs> um, yeah, so we get we get different listeners, and as we go out and Twitter, and certain people sort of become aware of us, it uh, they tend to take the whole the whole episode episodes right as if right. we are a, a, a series. I, I might not have played that uh, that card very well because people want to listen to our first one, which was. It was. I mean, is there even a way you can get to it? Yeah, you can. You can go to our oh website. podcast archive. Click that button. Yeah, and category. See our old ones. Oh, show all episodes. Hey, what do you know? Mm-hmm. Had a game with the turkey herpes. Yeah. Someone, yeah. someone was eating turkeys. Mm-hmm. 
that day and had the earpiece. <laughs> that was our Thanksgiving Thanksgiving episode, I think. Yeah, it was a one of our actually more popular episodes. Really? I bet. Yeah. Huh. Um, the other popular one was uh, Run DRM. Run DRM. It's too tricky to rock a crime. Yeah, <laughs> I was I was talking about my toothache, and that was quite popular, I guess. Or have we learned nothing from chat roulette? Mm. <laughs> Much ado <laughs> about man children. You sound like good topics or yeah, titles. They are. Yeah. Dan Dan's always very creative with that stuff. <laughs> you I, creative bastard. I think I, I don't know. I'm I'm still debating uh, if we maybe I'll have to talk about uh, Pokemon. What, how should we word this one? Dick smack. <laughs> gotta Dick catch. Smack gotta catch them all. Oh no. <laughs> no. But Hold not on. Dick smack. Not Dick no, you, you, I don't know. You could. You could. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Dick Smack. What can I say? It's pretty funny. Uh, I didn't know what to name them. It, yeah. it, it, it fit in the, the name box. So, it totally um, did. Yeah. yeah. It, it, couldn't, it wasn't just poo or ass. You could go Dick yeah. Smack. Uh, I, I, yeah. All right, guys. I, I, I make no apologies. <laughs> awesome. All right. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Damn, damn. <laughs> <laughs>search on uh, on YouTube for Vine what the hell did I just watch okay Vine uh, okay YouTube <laughs> <laughs> the honeydew oh my god yeah. it gets worse oh no 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 Ryan <laughs> why <laughs> no it gets Thanks worse his favorite Yakov so you're not all, imitation it can't that's all I gotta What's with the carrot? Wow, he's got some pretty uh, dex- pretty good dexterity in his feet. What the? Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> 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 okay. What? No! <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have to put his hands in it first. <laughs> just... uh, and I'm only halfway through. Eggs? Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It gets worse. No. 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 Yep. Yep. No. Yep. No. Yep. <laughs> no. It's happening. It's, happening. <laughs> it's not gonna work. That, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> <laughs> what the? F- <laughs> that's a waste of meat. That must be his parents' <laughs> this. He's just hitting it. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. No. I'm watching this whole thing. No. That's gross. I don't even know how I can. He's actually I got a remarkably his... clean place for all the stuff. I can done. just see it now. His mom's gonna come home and she's gonna be like, "What the fuck?" Oh, yep. That's oh. two minutes, eighteen seconds. That's that's <laughs> that's happening. <laughs> what? That reminds me of that scene when um, in Game of Thrones. Okay, yeah, that's pee. That actually did happen. <laughs> that's a, that is actual pee. Wait till he gets to two thirty-eight, man. He's gonna poop on it. No, he already kind of did that with the chocolate. But uh, no. Yep. Okay, that's not pee though. No, it is. Who's who's got a torrent like that? Oh, oh man. Okay, uh, I need Purell for my eyeballs. <laughs> Cannot be unseen.